Hi guys, it's your science teacher here with another video. This time it is all on B13, which is the topic of reproduction. This topic goes into looking at the different types of reproduction and looking at how we pass on our genes. Also delves into uh, looking at dominant and recessive alleles and even goes as far as looking at what makes up our DNA. So without further ado, let's get down to it. I hope you enjoy the video and remember if you do at the end of the video please remember to like the video and subscribe to my channel. The topic of reproduction starts off by looking at two different types of reproduction and there are two that we need to know about. Uh, and the first one is sexual reproduction. And sexual reproduction produces offspring that are genetically dif different. And the other type, you've probably guessed it, is asexual, which produces offspring genetically the same. Now, there are advantages and disadvantages of reproducing sexually or asexually. For example, asexual reproduction can happen very, very quickly. And the reason for this is you're just making exact replicas of yourself. Also, asexual reproduction can have the benefit of the fact that you do not need to find a mate. So this means uh, that if um, it's very hard to find another type of your species, uh, you can reproduce by yourself. But there are problems of asexual reproduction with there being no genetic variation, you can be affected by disease. For example, you will pass on some undesirable traits that could lead to your species getting wiped out completely. Sexual reproduction is often a longer process uh, than asexual reproduction and it needs two mates, which is a drawback of it. However, the positives of sexual reproduction is it leads to genetic variation and more than often positive traits are passed on because if uh, you cannot find a mate, you will not reproduce. Looking at different organisms that reproduce sexually and asexually. Well, asexual reproduction usually happens in bacteria. However, there are a few uh, animals that do reproduce asexually, for example aphids. Aphids will reproduce asexually if there uh, are not a lot around or they need to reproduce quickly uh, because there is a lot of food around and they can take advantage of it. However, aphids can also reproduce sexually so they kind of get the best of both worlds and most other animals reproduce sexually. For sexual reproduction to occur, we need to create sex cells, which are also known as gametes. And obviously, the female gamete is the egg cell, and the male gamete is uh, the sperm cell. Plants can also reproduce uh, sexually, and their gametes are pollen, uh, which is the male sex cell in a plant, and they also uh, contain egg cells as well. So if it is sexual reproduction in animals, it's egg cells and sperms, and if it's plants, it's pollen and egg cells. We looked a little bit at how we produce our sex cells in the topic of B2 in cell division. And you know that sex cells are produced by a process called meiosis. And meiosis occurs when you have a cell containing 46 chromosomes, and in the end, it produces four daughter cells, and each of the daughter cells only have 23 chromosomes. Each daughter cell is also genetically different, and you can see over here how that occurs. Uh, you can see that different sections uh, of that chromosomes get swapped around, uh, and that means that they are all genetically different. And this is how sexual reproduction leads to genetic variation. All the genetic material uh, for your cell is contained in the nucleus of your cell. And your nucleus of, in each adult cell, apart from gametes, contains 46 chromosomes. Our chromosomes are made up of a material called 
deoxyribonucleic acid, also known as DNA. Also, your chromosomes, a short section, can be called a gene, and each specific gene codes for a specific protein to be made. Your genes control characteristics such as your eye colour, hair colour, even your height. And for the most part, you get one gene from your mum and one gene from your father. And whether it's dominant or recessive, which we'll look on in future slides, is uh, controls which gene you are going to show. If you zoom in on the DNA further, you'll notice that the DNA contains base pairs. And all you need to know for GCSEs is which base pairs match up. So A matches up to T and C matches up to G. In each cell, we have around 3 billion base pairs. And the entire genetic makeup is called the genome. This just basically means all of the base pairs in every single cell. And in total, there are 21,000 proteins that your body uh, makes due to the human genome. The actual characteristics that we show are controlled by our genes. We get one gene from our father and one gene from our mother. Let's look at some of the characteristics that this person shows here. She clearly has brown eyes and she has black hair. So she must have genes that code for this protein. Now genes can be dominant or they can be recessive. And brown eyes is a dominant gene. And a dominant gene is one which you only need one of that gene to code for the specific protein. For example, if her parents gave her the brown eye gene, which, and you can tell it's dominant because it's a capital letter, that always stands for a dominant gene. And she has blue eyes and she got that gene from another parent, then you, she would show the brown eye characteristic. Now the actual genes that you get from your parents is called the genotype. And the characteristic that you show, which for this one would be brown eyes, would be the phenotype, as that is the characteristic you show. Now we don't actually know which genes uh, this woman is showing because of the fact uh, she could have two different uh, sets of genes to sh code for that protein. She could either have capital B, capital B, or she could have capital B, little b. And both of them still code for brown eyes. This is called the homozygous uh, alleles, and these this is called the heterozygous alleles. And homo just means the same, and hetero means different. I also introduced a new term that we hadn't heard before, which is alleles. And these are different forms of the same gene. For example, you have alleles for hair colour, you have alleles for eye colour, things like that. You can use something called a Punnett square to work out the chance of a certain a child showing a particular gene. So let's look at how to do this. In this example, it's looking at tongue rolling as the form of gene that it's showing. And here we have a key with the big T being tongue roller and little t being a non-tongue roller. And I can tell that by the capital letters, which one is dominant and which one is recessive. So the capital T is the tongue roller and the little t is the non-tongue roller. So let's look at what a Punnett square actually looks like. What I always do is I first label my Punnett square, so I write father down up here, and I usually uh, use the same technique all the time. I use put the father on top and the mother uh, I have just below it, and then I put in my genes to create a Punnett square. So let's look at that then. Uh, two heterozygous tongue rollers. Remember that hetero means uh, different, so they have different forms of the same allele. So that means that both parents are going to have both 
genes with the big T and the little t. And let's look at the four combinations of genes that the kid could show them. So let's put the big T in from this and the big T in from this and the gene from the mother and father combined to have two homozygous tongue rollers like that. And then in this box, you've got capital T, little t. Then in this box, you also have capital T, little t. And finally, in this box, you have two little t's. Now, as you can see from this, in three types out of the four, you're going to show the ability of a tongue roller. So you've got a 75% chance of your child being a tongue roller with only 25% chance of being a homozygous tongue roller. Let's look at another example. Here I have one non-tongue rolling parent and one heterozygous tongue roller. It doesn't matter which one I choose as the mother or the father. So let's just pick the father to be the non-tongue roller and the mother to be the tongue roller. So the non-tongue rolling parent must have both uh, of the little t gene because of the fact it does not show that trait and it's recessive so you need to have both of them alleles to show that trait and let's look at the mother now uh, it's a heterozygous tongue roll i mean it's capital t and little t and then you fill up the punnett square remember you just put each one inside the box of its row or column so for example let's do this box here which would be capital t little t this box here which would be capital t little t and then these two boxes down here, which will be little t, little t, and little t, little t. So you have 50% chance now of uh, being a non-tongue roller. And 50% chance of being a tongue roller in this example. And there is also, if you look now, 0% chance of being a homozygous tongue roller. Not all genes that are passed on from our parents are good. Sometimes we inherit genetic diseases from our parents as well. And there are two diseases that you need to know about for your GCSE. The first one we're going to look at is called cystic fibrosis. And cystic fibrosis is caused by a recessive allele. That means that you need to have both genes to show the trait. But it also means that you can be a carrier of this gene. This means that you may not know that you're a carrier and you can have that gene without showing the trait. Cystic fibrosis can be very bad for your respiratory system as when you have it, you produce too much uh, mucus and this can block up your airways and make it really hard to breathe. The other disease that you need to know about for your GCSEs is polydactyly. Um, polydactyly, uh, you can see that someone has polydactyly because it, they usually have uh, too many or too few uh, appendices. That basically means they can have too many fingers or toes or too few fingers or toes. And this is caused by a dominant gene. So that means you only need to have one of that gene to show the trait. <clears throat> just like uh, in the last slide you can use a punnett square to work out the chance of a child having cystic fibrosis or polydactyly uh, using the genotype of both the parents genetic screening can be carried out to look at the chance of you having a baby and them having genetic disease and there are different ways that you can genetically screen you can either use cells from both the parents and this is perhaps less controversial, uh, screening on adults and just checking uh, what their genotypes are. This can then show them whether they are carrier of any recessive genetic disorders and this can inform them then on whether they are to go forward in having a child. You can also screen embryos now and that can happen either by checking the ambionic
checking the ambiotic fluids by using a needle or you can in fact uh, look at sections of the placenta and use that to work out uh, whether there is a genetic disease. And the last one that you can uh, do in genetic screening is in vitro fertilization and basically that is where uh, an embryo is formed and cells are taken from that embryo and analysed under a microscope uh, to see what the genes that they have are. Now each one of these have their ethical concerns especially embryonic and in vitro fertilisation because it goes against many religious views uh, so there is many people that are against genetic screening. Also IVF could lead to uh, the creation of designer babies where you can control all of their genes um, and there is concerns that you won't con just be looking for genetic diseases you can be controlling other traits about the baby such as eye colour or hair colour and there are ethical concerns with this. In the UK uh, it is illegal to control any other genes other than genetic disorders. In addition to this embryonic uh, screening can also lead to an increase in abortions because of the fact that if you screen your baby and it, there is a high chance that it's going to be born with a genetic disease there is a higher chance of you choosing to get an abortion. Another problem with genetic testing and genetic screening as well is the fact that sometimes it's not always uh, correct as well. So even if you do get a result, it cannot, it's not 100% accurate and therefore you could be misinformed on your decision that you make. I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's video. Remember if you did, please drop it a like and please check the comments for uh, some other cool videos that I've made and some content that I'm making with the videos.